Okay, welcome back. This is your boy, The Brad Geek, and this is part two of Foundation Design under the ProCone tutorial series. So, we're continuing looking at isolated footings in ProCone, and in this video today, what we're doing is we're just moving on forward from what we did in the previous video where we looked at inputs, and now we're going to be looking at the loads and calculations. So, when we left with the previous video, this is the screen that we had, and as you remember, we had an error at the bottom which said no loads entered. So, you cannot proceed from this step unless you enter the loads. So that's what we're going to do today and then let's just get started. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to put your load case. So the next thing, the very first thing that you want to do is you're just going to come the, oh sorry, forgive me for that. You just want to come uh, under load case. So we're going to call this load case 1 and what do we want is the column number which load case or this load case is going to apply to which column so for us we just have one column which is column 1 so this is going to pick 1. And then the next thing that you have is the limiting factor to the ultimate limit state for overturning. Like I told you in the previous, what we did is you come, if you remember to the previous screen, what we did is ULS overturning or LF, we chose 0.9. So you're definitely just going to enter 0.9 in that column. And then the next thing that you have is the limiting factor, ultimate limit state. This is what we just, the limiting factor, what do you use? So in foundations, we use 1.4 because it's for serviceability. I know it's ULS but trust me you want to use 1.4 because it's for sls it's a funny thing that came up with program but hey don't 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 stress about it so then the next thing what you do is like i told you the first thing is you just enter your lower case next thing you're doing is you enter in the column number which well, that is to say which column do you want this load case to apply to and the next thing that you want is the lf ulis for overturning and then the next thing that you this is mostly for soil pressure and lateral shear as well you know overturning retaining or something similar to that and then the next thing that you need is lf ulis like i told you you want to use the service limit state factor not the ULS factor which is 1.6 mostly for using BS 8110 so now the next the most important thing or the most important thing when you're designing your foundation or isolated foundation footings is P the reason why this is the actual load that is transmitted down to the footing so you will find that most footings may not have moments lateral forces whether it's in the X or in the Y which is denoted by HX HY MX and my but they will always have a value for p so this is the load after you're doing your load takedowns this is the load the maximum load that you get that is going to be transmitted down the column and that needs to be transmitted to the ground for that selected isolated pudding so for in this case what we're going to do is i'm just going to enter one point let's just one go one one oh Oh no, I mean 1100 kilonewtons. This is what is going down. So, in this first example, we're, gonna, we're just going to have the um, actual load, which is P. We're not going to have HX, HY, MX, or MY because most um, footings as well, or most design assumptions, assumes all these are not present. You only have these in very complicated structures, but we started off with simply simple structures and we'll get a complicated structures way later on. Also, the other thing that you might want to add on is if you scroll all the way to the right, there's a tab or a table that is under a section here that says optimize costs. So this is what you want to do. Maybe you just want to add to you. Maybe you have uh, cost targets or limitations when it comes to design your project so maybe sometimes you just want to know the best thing that it would do so you do try and optimize the design for the best cost but what you need to do is to give it the cost of concrete per cubic meter and the reinforcement per ton so what i'm going to do is i think i assume it's um 200 in my country 200 us dollars and reinforcement per ton i'm not too sure but i might go with um I think what I mean, okay, let's just use 350 as generic for now, then we'll just come up with what we see. So this is what happens. This is the, the very first step. What you want to do is just enter the loads, and this is basically what we've been doing. So the next thing after you enter the loads, one thing I want you to see is that when you go to the top, the design tab is now available previously it was grayed out like the calculation seat and vanish issue but then worry you're going to see what's going to happen but once you enter the loads and everything is correct and you know errors are present anymore the design tab becomes available for you and the next thing that you want to do is just click the design tab so first things first things this is now bringing you the results of the calculations that have been calculated so the first thing that you had is the output for load case one so 
the first thing that it does will you the first section that you have here it gives you everything all the results that are in relation with soul pressure that is the safety factor slip uh, soul pressure that um, the maximum soul pressure that this base is able to sit on the maximum serviceability limits soul pressure as well so one thing that you want about this section which i'm just showing you just look at my mouse it's over and over there what you want is to make sure that nothing is in red and all these factors are more than 100. So if they're less than 100, your design fails. And if anything is in red, your design fails as well. Like in this case, we have uh, for the service, of, it fails for the ultimate limit state. It's okay. But for the serviceability limit state, this means that it's just going to sink. So it fails. So the first thing that you want to do, if it's SL, uh, mostly, you might want to check your base depth or what you want to do as well. You might want to increase let's just increase this to 2.25 and uh 2.25 and let's just go back i'm gonna design it 250 as well still fails so what you want to do is maybe take that a little bit up as well three let's see now it's okay so what it just meant for serviceability it just meant that your pit was failing your foundation was failing with respect to serviceability but now with three by three base it now passes with full serviceability so the next thing like i told you just want to make sure none of this is in red and also your safety limit your factors are greater than 100 percent because if it isn't 100 percent then the safety is not good for structural engineering you know it's good for other things but not for engineering then the next thing that you you have is a section where you see bottom and top so what it does it just calculates the design moment for you that is the moment that is going to be, be occurring at the top of the base which is over this part the top where you look at my mouse and the other one is the no that's the bottom i mean the bottom is at the bottom of the base and the top is at the top of the base so the design moment at the top in the x direction which is this direction at the top at the bottom i mean sorry I'm confusing that a little bit is 134.24 and to counteract that moment you're going to need a reinforcement of 586 square millimeters per meter run of the bed of the base at the bottom and uh same applies in the y direction you're going to have an equal and um similar moment which is 134.24 and the reinforcement in that in that direction is going to be 597 uh, square meters per millimeter that is what it's just telling you so what you're going to do is you need to put steel which is equivalent to 586 square millimeters per meter run and uh in the y direction in the bottom you're going to need 597 square millimeters per meter run and at the top uh, unfortunately well fortunately for us i'm very sorry about it, i have to say but fortunately for us um you're not going to have any design moment and uh in the y as well you're not going to have any design moment and tip you don't have any design no moment actually occurs in any base unless it's deeper than 600 millimeters right it's 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 a concrete thing i don't know it's a dynamics it's been studied well but if it's 600 or less dude you're safe don't worry about any moments you, you don't even have to worry about top steel but you, you just want to put it it's okay with you then the next thing that you have is linear shear is the shear sections where you have a linear shear in the x linear shear in the y linear shear in other directions as well if anything that comes up and you also have your punching shear so the thing that happens is the one that is um the linear shear which is in green or next to the green if you see this one is like 0 0.225 it's next to the linear shear in x what it just means is that this is the max and please please sorry sorry this is not this is the shear that is occurring due to the loading case in this case load case one so load case one is producing the shear of 0 0.225 mpa in the x direction but then vc is the shear resistance uh provided by your design that is to say the steel and your concrete no it's actually your concrete so the concrete resists shear in its own so what it's saying is that your section or the section for the base that is a three by three base which is uh 0 0.6 millimeters deep is providing a shear resistance of 0 0.336 so as long as it's less than 0 0.336 uh, you're okay same applies for linear shear in the y it's also just telling you that the um, shear that's been uh, produced by the load case is 0 0.229 but your section is providing the shear resistance of 0 0.336 so your base is okay that's why it's not in red so if your linear shear was more than 0 0.336 it was definitely going to be in red let me just try to see if i could put the shear way above way above usually you can just do that by producing the base let's see if that works 
Yes, as you can see, when I reduce the base, the shear just increases. So another way to counteract shear is just to increase the depth of your base. So increasing the depth of your base helps you provide a greater shear resistance and also minimize the shear provided by the loading. So the same applies to your punching shear. The next one to the uh, greened out. You know, the, one, the one that I'm selecting which is 0 0.5150 that is the shear provided by your load case but uh, VC that is the shear that is uh, the shear resistance provided by your section so in this case we are good we are good to go and in this case the cost of coming up with this foundation or just setting up this thing is being estimated at 1109.27 that is for low case one so yes ladies and gentlemen this is basically how you design your beams so if you don't have any red um entry in this table then you're gonna go but if you do have a red entry for example when we had that 0 0.4 uh, all you need to do is just come back to your inputs play around with them try to tweak them a bit for sure you want to tweak uh, the depth and if it's for what do you call this for example let me just put 2000 here it's 2000 uh, for anything that has to affect you know the soil pressure and also the shear in this case you, you since the load is up you will need to play with uh, maybe your foundation let me just put that at five and then you want to put that at seven as well and uh yeah you want to change it up a bit just you can see once you do so it's all about designing something that is cost effective and just because you can see that now you have three six four five so you might want to play that distribute it a little bit or choose another foundation but this is how you design your beams so the next thing that you definitely want to just take this back to 1100 this two three three and uh this 2.6 the next thing after the design what you do is you come up to your calculation sheets what this do is just basically they give you a record of what you did all the calculations that are kid in during coming up with the best design and reinforcement for what you call this for your base so that is it ladies and gentlemen this is for today as you can see this is what you have you have a baseline it shows you a history of the inputs that you put in the affected loads okay it gives a sketch of the best output for low case one and the best design that it thinks that you need going to use so this is useful if you need to have a history and as i know most people before anything is approved they want to see the design calculation so this is very useful if you somebody asked for you so that's what you need so for the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to be looking at the banding schedule but that's going to be a video for uh, next time we're just going to make sure that we go quickly i'm just going to go over the banding schedule all the things involved in there but uh if this is your first time coming to my channel please please hit the subscribe button and if you're coming back and you haven't hit the subscribe button please you definitely need to do that and also you need to hit the sub what is it do they call it the notifications bell so that you get my awesome content every time that it drops also uh, please remember I have so many amazing playlists on Procon as well uh, and also on roofs so please do check them out most I have tons of amazing content so please like the video share the link and hit the subscribe button until next time check out my playlist see you next time peace love